Hey, golfers, and welcome back to another episode of the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. Today, Pierce Lanou joins us, writer of the Sunday Swing, to recap, first of all, to recap uh, perhaps our favorite tournament of the year, the Masters. Um, it was an, an eventful 63 holes, I would say, and then uh, our, the most dominant player in golf ran away with it. But it was still, you know, it's still just a really fun week. It, you know, you get all the different... Um, avenues to watch as well. The Masters website and app is fantastic for that. Um, and as I mentioned for a long time, it was a very, very interesting tournament with the weather and a bunch of fun names up there on the leaderboard. But in the end, Scotty Scheffler is just too good. Yeah, world number one, flexing his muscles. Mm -hmm. um, second green jacket in three, three years now. And uh, third win in a month. And his only other finish in that month stretch was a was a second. So yeah, he's really he's lost to one golfer in his last four starts, and he was a, an inch less than an inch from yeah five foot going away, into a playoff with that from... player. Um, so that's a, a testament to how dominant he has really been. Um, and we can talk a little bit about you know his equipment and stuff, but I mean as you've noted in, in, you know, the Sunday swing multiple times, it's that, that this putter that he switched to um, ahead of the Arnold Palmer Invitational. So he was using, well, he, for the last several years, he's kind of, he's used that um, kind of a prototype Scotty Cameron, you know, Newport style. Um, and then briefly tried out the Logan Olsen blade. Actually last fall kind of tried a mallet, the Spider Tour with a milled face to it. Uh, that was a short lived run. Now, this early this year went to that Logan Olson blade, and then went back to the mallet with a, mil, or a, a face insert this time, mm -hmm. and that's been seemingly the really big difference, and has kind of catapulted him to the top in the last f month. I mean, he's won three times, and he's got second ones. Th yeah. Those are his results, and and three of those four events he has played against world class fields. You know, Arnold Palmer, the players, and Augusta, and he just beats everybody. So. Clearly, I mean, I, I we'll see how this trends in the long haul. But right now, he's got the putter work and he's gaining strokes, which was not the case most of the time before this. Um, he would be winning or you know finishing well despite poor putting. But now the putting is at least average or better. Yeah. And if that's the case moving forward, he's going to win a lot more tournaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like you said, like he's putting at least average now and and look at the results he's winning yeah and that's kind of been the the analysis you've heard throughout the golf world really for the last year year and a half is if Scheffler just puts average maybe a little above a little mm -hmm. below average like he's gonna either win or he's gonna finish in the top five and uh yeah we're seeing it now so i think that that taylor made spider tour x has probably found it's home yeah. in his bag for a while. I don't, I don't anticipate another change anytime soon. Um, and yeah, I mean the, the sky's the limit for Scotty really. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the putting is the X factor for him in that it was the thing maybe holding him back from so many wins in the past. Um, but the ball striking being as consistent as it is, is also just another, um, reason to be in awe of Scotty where, Every single week, he it seems like statistically, or even when you just watch him through the eye test, he is flushing the ball so much better. He's hitting his tee shots in better locations. His approach shots are always in the right spot. If he's not attacking the flag with a wedge, he's hitting a mid to long iron in the center of the green safely where he can two putt or maybe make a run at a birdie. Mm -hmm. um, these are the things that he seems to be doing way better than everybody else every single week. So you combine that with a putter that could get hot, uh, but seemingly now is never going to be catastrophically bad. That's a good recipe for success for him. So uh, I think he's, to your point, I think he's found the combinations that are going to work for him. And now he's going to be a heavy, heavy favorite in basically any start he has the rest of the year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the I, I think it was 450 to one at, at Augusta. Yeah which was like the most heavily favored golfer I've seen in a long time. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, 
prior this year he was kind of around that eight nine to one yeah range um but yeah really really since the the putter came in and like you mentioned the ball striking it's just it's to a level that hasn't been seen in in a long time probably since peak tiger mid 2000s mm-hmm. um and yeah the 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 rest of the bag outside of the putter has kind of stayed pretty much the same for him yeah. for the last really since he came out and won his first tournament yeah uh, I mean, he, may have, he may have upgraded years ago. to the latest say t- right Taylor yeah woods, yeah i think but he, that's I really think he does that yeah like he puts in the new woods every year but the irons i think he's been playing those p7 tws mm-hmm. the, the whole time and as well as those tricks on uh utilities he's yeah. got in there it's just it's it's like clockwork automatic yeah. for him yeah i know the he was using those those tricks on irons a lot because some of those holes at augusta were playing like the par fives were playing longer mm-hmm. um so his approach shots with those three and four irons were, were needed and then also i think hole four for sure at Augusta, that longer par three, I know he used the the those tricks on uh, utilities a couple times as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, the rest of the bay, Taylor made uh, QI10, the the core driver had kind of the standard one, not the LS model. Um, then the QI10 three wood um, into the tricks on ZU85 utilities yep. three and four iron, and then he has <clears throat> Vokey wedges SM8 design, and then a kind of a wedge works proto 60 degree, and then of course the spider tour x putter that we've discussed already so um a lot of things working there i think that's a winning combination i don't mm-hmm. see anything changing yeah. for him in the near future um as far as his setup goes um throughout the tournament you know he got to a really good start thursday was only trailing bryson by one after the first round um and then kind of friday and saturday the weather got a little dicey brought players back into play and scotty just kind of maintained his spot there at about five six under for the most part I think he may have crept up to like eight under in there, but for the most part, he was kind of hovering around the same spot and then really didn't, you know, vault himself into double digits under until Sunday afternoon. Yeah. Um, but it, I guess at what point were you thinking as you were watching and tuning into the coverage, okay, this is Scotty's <clears throat> tournament to lose? It could, I mean, if you if you say first round, you know, Dirty yeah. Thursday, I would honestly, that's, that's fair. No, I, I literally said that downstairs last yeah. Thursday when we were watching the tournament. I saw it bogey free 66 and i just said okay so scotty won this tournament yeah he's not losing and was there any doubts of that as the tournament progressed and things got a little more um i guess clustered at the top yeah of the there, i mean i don't know about doubts but there was like a 30 minute window midway through the round saturday where he, he dropped a few shots i think yeah. it was 11 and 12 on saturday or 10 and 11 one of the two made a double bogey and a bogey and dropped back to to four under and i think that's when uh actually nikolai hoygaard took the lead briefly at like seven under um then he proceeded to make five or six bogeys in a row and scotty bounced back and finished up at even par for the day so yeah really i think it was you know the bogey free round thursday and then really he he didn't have an over par round on the week right so like in he those, still hasn't shot over par in 2024 yeah like in those conditions <laughs> too nuts. like everybody was shooting over par yeah and for him to just even when he got to two three over on the round he's able to just bounce right back yeah, he just and make, kicks it in gear make three birdies and, yeah. and salvage a good score and that seems like it's kind of the the best part about scotty is not even anything statistically with his um performance strokes gained or even his golf swing it just seems like mentally he has everything compartmentalized the right way where drop a couple shots all right i i have the game i can make a couple birdies down down the stretch and get those right back um nothing seems to phase him and it seems like he and his caddy ted scott have this awesome relationship too yeah. where there it, it truly is like a um a teamwork relationship where they're bouncing ideas and they're going through things together and it, that all those things together kind of make him and ted i guess as the team almost unbeatable you know yeah it, it, it takes it takes a one or two bad rounds i put that in quotes because he doesn't shoot over par anymore but bad rounds for for them to not win a tournament right now mm-hmm. um and at augusta in those conditions 
to shoot even par better every day is wild. Yeah. Um, Friday and Saturday were very tough. I know Friday was one of the higher average score rounds really in the history of the tournament. Yeah. Um, or at least recent history. Uh, so, so to see him survive all that and, and then really went what probably eight or nine holes in on Sunday, it was a really close tournament. And then if you had, if you looked away for an hour and a half, he came back, he was up by four or whatever, and it was yeah. over. So he kind of outlasted the competition of avoiding those key mistakes and hitting the shots when necessary. Mm -hmm. For yeah. me, it was hole nine on Sunday when that second shot was tracking at the hole. He had yeah. already birdied eight to kind of get his round back together. Nine, he stuffed one tight there, tapped in. That, to me, was like, okay, well, he's 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 found it. Yeah. He's not making any mistakes the rest of the day. Yeah. It's going to take a wild effort from a Homa or Morikawa or Oberg to chase him down at right. this point, In and which, nobody like, did. I think when I when I really like knew <laughs> for sure it was probably over was after that stretch at Amen Corner. Yeah, I think we had a double bogey from Morikawa, double bogey from Obear, and then Homa also. Those are both on eleven, and then yeah, Homa had the double and on 12. twelve, and then at that point it was just like okay, yep. <laughs> like. And that's the it's thing about Scotty. Scotty's he, doesn't tournament. Even, he didn't even have to make more birdies. And he's like, oh, I'll just make more for yeah, fun. Yeah, he made like six birdies <laughs> in the last 10 holes or whatever it was. But um, yeah, you mentioned the scoring average. The, the scoring average was over par every round, I believe, Yeah. this week. And um, going back to Ted Scott, do you think there's anything anything to that with the, the Masters is the only major Scotty's won? And granted, you know, he's only been Scotty Shuffler for. Yeah two or three years now, but Ted Scott's now got four green jackets. That's right. Because he was on Bubba's bag in 2012 and 2014 for those two wins. And So the real question is, who now is, he's helped Scotty to, to two. Yeah. Who is Ted Scott going to caddy to Masters wins in 2032 right. and 2034? Exactly. <laughs> no. But I I think Scotty's in a different realm than Bubba, though. Yeah. Um, I, in the I sense agree. that, like, you could – look back at the last couple of years for Scotty and there's one, two or three majors where he a couple of shots here, a shot here. And he's also winning that one. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the U S open in 2022, I believe, you know, he had, I think a shot or two back of Fitzpatrick. Yeah. Um, there's, a, a, you know, he's in there consistently now in the majors. He's a name to be reckoned with. You couldn't really say that about Bubba. Uh, but I think there's something there too, to where, Clearly, Ted Scott has a certain knowledge and yeah. expertise of Augusta, and, and I'm sure that's helped uh, in a big way the last couple, um, yeah, you know, times. I mean, the the, the wins for Scotty at Augusta. Mm -hmm. I think there's something a little extra to having a caddy with knowledge at Augusta because yeah. if you look at Tommy Fleetwood, that's week, right. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, he had the the local caddy on on the bag, and he posted his best best yeah. Masters finish. Was he T four? Yeah. Something like that. Yep. So, And he, yeah, because I don't know, I can't remember what the situation was, but I know his caddy wasn't able to mm -hmm. be there this week. Um, didn't seem to face Tommy. And so, yeah, there, it's, it's you, t you hear all this talk about how Augusta's different. It's different. The green complexes are crazy. You know, you're, you have to miss in the right places. And, you know, it's tough for us as fans to really know exactly what that means. But there's... I would imagine if you were to talk to some of these seasoned caddies or or the, or the players that have played there for years and years and, and know, they could give you the sort of the explanation of what that means. And so to have Scotty, who's, you know, played there for, what, four or five years now, but then to have him team up with Ted Scott, who has caddy there for years and years and been very successful, I'm sure there's – I'm sure that really is beneficial for him. So, yeah, um, yeah, this is – it's wild to see Scotty, this dominant um, – He's having a stretch of golf that, if you look at data golf metrics, you know perhaps the second best peak or run um, ever behind Tiger, according to their metrics. So I don't know how long this is going to last, but um, and we'll see what happens with you know Baby Scheffler here in the yeah. next couple of weeks. But uh, I'm already looking forward to the PGA to see if he can you know continue this, win another major, and then maybe the second the, leg of the and then the maybe Grand the Grand Slam, Slam yeah. discussion becomes pretty serious after yeah, that. Yeah, if he wins the PGA, I think it's gonna start to start to get pretty uh yeah pretty real. <laughs> yeah, and I it seemingly Valhalla, which we have some 
content coming up here with Mark Brooks, who won the 96 PGA of Valhalla. Um, seemingly, Scheffler would be a great fit there as well. Yeah. So He's a great fit anywhere you, you right. take that's him. fair yeah <laughs> his game right now carries to any golf course you can think of so. yeah um other i guess big takeaways that you had from augusta outside of scotty Scheffler, we've talked a lot about him already so yeah yeah uh, i know there's a bunch of fun names that were up there on the leaderboard throughout the week mm -hmm. yeah it's it's fun to see uh ludwig Bear mm -hmm. sort of you know not that i had any doubts before but i feel like <clears throat> his performance this week kind of just solidifies himself amongst the world really mm -hmm. like that that he's going to be he's going to be a serious a serious threat on the PGA tour. I mean, we've already seen we've already seen a, a PGA tour victory uh win in Europe, Ryder Cup win in Rome and first major start second place to Scotty Scheffler. Yeah. In a place where rookies typically don't play very well at the Masters. We saw um, Wyndham Clark, another Masters rookie, he missed the cut. He's been playing some of the best golf in the world. Yep. Um, so just really, really impressed by yeah. by Ludwig and and the game he's got. Yeah, I mean, he it's wild to think of how quickly he has climbed the rankings because he's like number seven in the world now. Yeah. And a year ago, he was not even a professional yet. Mm -hmm. I don't think. I think it was June last year he turned professional, and since then he has just vaulted up the rankings he played in a Ryder cup before he played in a major which is wild to think about and yeah. i don't think anybody ever has that scenario um you know take place in their career and then he does play a first major at augusta um and to your point rookies usually struggle he wins without the number one player in the world at, the, at in the event right i mean he's yeah. he's the best player there so um He's got a certain – his golf swing is awesome. He kind of has a little bit of Scheffler and that he just seems to kind of um, not be phased by anything, which <clears throat> yeah. I, I think is going to bode well for him. So. Yeah, I saw – I think it was Sunday after he made that double. Like, the very next hole, he was just laughing it up, yeah. walking up the fair with his caddy. I'm just like <laughs> – Yeah. He's it's, just it's, completely it's, it, unbothered. It, it, I mean, truly, like, in, a, in, in majors when stuff can go wrong and bad bounces happen, it's like – I think – I think that'll bode well for him in, in future majors, maybe one this year where he gets into the contention and yeah. <clears throat> he's got to stay the course. So uh, Max Homa, also great to see him kind of stay in contention for four days at at a major. Um, he said, I think he finally finished in the top 10 last year, maybe at one. Um, but to see him up there and, and – he didn't really not like he fell apart necessarily. He had the bad bounce on twelve results yeah. in the double and that more or less ended his chances. But um I think I I really hope to see him win one. And I think there's maybe another confidence boost there for him knowing he can stay stick around with these guys in majors. Yeah. Um just wasn't in the cards this week with Scott with Scotty right. playing the way he was. Yeah, I think, you know, you know, they say there's no moral victories, but I think for Max this was a, a true moral victory. You know, that's really been the biggest knock on him and, and his career thus far is the major performance. We just haven't seen it. Yep. Um, you know, we've seen him play well in other big events before, but just not these four specifically. And definitely not the Masters. Right. So to see him kind of take a take a step forward and and contend and um you know be right near the top really until the back nine on Sunday uh, I think yeah I think like you mentioned that's gonna be it's gonna be big for him going forward mm -hmm. yeah I mean I he's easy to root for so I'll be continuing to root for him and and future majors um I also had a note of uh Bryson and just how fun he makes watching tournaments yeah um whether it's intentional or not <laughs> for him i think there's a certain element of um entertainment that he brings to the to the to the tournament to the watching experience and also just his unique way of yeah building his bag of clubs and and how it all works for him is he he, he he's just so unique in how he does it but it's i think it's good for the game when he's involved and for sure so i, yeah, I enjoyed every of, element of of bryson being around um there's a lot of uh, good yeah. bryson moments this week from i don't know if you saw the photo of him on 
on Monday with the uh, eclipse glasses on, staring up at the sun, <laughs> just big smile on its face. That's that, it's that's pretty great. funny. And then uh, yeah, we had the the sign carrying on, yep. on Thursday, and then uh, that unreal hole out yeah. on Saturday to close the round after after uh, yeah. a wayward drive to really you know get himself back. Yeah, because he kind of struggled like, down the stretch that round. Felt like that kind of you know got him back in the tournament, yeah. gave him a chance going into Sunday. So. Yeah, fun to see him, uh, see him play well and and you know yeah. up to his usual antics. <laughs> yep, yep. And that's never that seems like that's just genuinely who he is. So it's not going to change. Um, the we had Brian Knutson on from Golf Tour X last week, and we talked about how he has to be the first player to use a crank driver at Augusta, like maybe ever. Yeah. Um, the crank formula fire LD, I believe is the model. Um, and we do have a few select crank drivers at second swing, but yeah, I've seen um, them. They're, they're wild. They're, it's, it's interesting, <laughs> um, but clearly it works for him. You know, he's, he's driving the ball. Well, um, he's also got those 3d printed irons. Um, I don't know exactly all the details, but I know the USGA, um, added them to the conforming list last week, right before the event. Um, so there's, you know, he's, he does his scientific process uh, with everything he does. And, you know, to see him, he kind of goes to live and sort of is, I don't want to say forgotten, but people, you know, you kind of forget about yeah. Bryson and how he, his, you know, how methodical he is about stuff. And then you get him back into a major and you see it against the best in the world and to see how it still is very competitive is, is cool. So um, I'll be looking for him as well moving forward in these majors. For sure. Um, I guess we already talked about Tommy Fleetwood. I also want to just note Tiger grinding through yeah. the tough conditions on Friday was fun to watch too. Really um, impressive Thursday and Friday. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The Thursday and Friday, I think he was what one, one over after two rounds. Yeah. Um, now granted the weekend didn't go very well, but I think, you know, he did end up, um, you know, breaking that record of cuts 24 in a row. Mm -hmm. That's nothing to sneeze at. That's unreal. Yeah. And so um, if there is a, I guess my theory is that if there is a tournament, a major, coming up where conditions are are difficult you know something like one two three under par wins and tiger's able to gut that out for four days those are the events i think he can he can do really well in. like i think he has a leg up on the competition in terms of strategy making pars yeah. grinding things out uh, missing in the right places all of those things now i kind of ha he has to use more of that to his advantage First, obviously, in his prime, he could just overpower the course mm -hmm. and make a bunch of birdies. But I think now that's the type of thing, as we saw on Friday, you know, even par when he shot that day is like wildly impressive. That was, yeah, that was like three below the scoring average yeah. or whatever it was. And there was only like a couple guys that were under par that day. Yeah, like he, he beat a lot of very good players mm -hmm. on Friday. So, um, yeah, good. I mean, good to see him make another cut. And, and anytime you get to watch Tiger at, at Augusta, it's, you know, at this point in his career, definitely winding down, you know, it's just like, man, you just got to soak it in and yeah. enjoy it while we can. And, um, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe a U.S. Open or an Open in his later years will, the stars will, will line yeah. again. I mean, we've they seen, nearly did for Tom Watson when he yeah. was 59. We've seen it um, before. So it's... It's certainly out there, and he, you know he's the type too. He'll continue yeah. to try. You know he'll he'll compete. He'll accept those starts. He's won all the majors. He's going to be playing in them, um, and he won't give up on that again. So yeah, uh, we'll we'll continue to see Tiger. You know, provided the health is is there. So, um, all right. Lastly, before we talk about the Chevron um, on the ladies' side, I did want to get just a quick discussion about the PJ Championship in going to Valhalla. Um, I talked about the stuff we have with Mark Brooks coming up. We'll learn a lot more about the course, but are there any names that you're going to be looking for at Valhalla that maybe we haven't discussed yet today <laughs> or just in general, some of the guys that you're going to be watching to maybe yeah. get that major breakthrough? Yeah. Um, I think, well, obviously we have Brooks Kapka coming back yep. uh, to defend. Um, I was pretty high on him this week at the Masters. Yeah. I thought he was going to be... A the only hesitation I had, I guess, with him or, or, you know, doubts was in the past, he's always kind of, he's tended to maybe in, in PJ Tour events or live events, the week or two leading up, mm -hmm. 
he would kind of focus at that event and finish well, say at, you know, the PGA Tour event before Augusta or, yeah. you know, the Live event before Augusta last year, he won in 2023. And so the hot start at Augusta in 2023 didn't surprise me, but this year he came off, I think it was back-to-back, what, 77s or 80s or something? Yeah, he he didn't play well At the in. previous Live event, yeah. Made a putter change, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, I just I just expected him to, yeah. to show up. Um, but I think we'll see uh, we'll see a different Brooks Kepka, I think, at the PGA Championship, a place where I, I hope so because it's always fun when he's in there. And, seems you know, like he making some wins every other year. Yeah, um, and just a few guys that you know I think were disappointing this week that I want to see bounce back at the PGA. Victor Hovland, who yeah. came close last year in that kind of showdown with Brooks on Sunday, mm-hmm. and I remember it was back nine, that kind of situation in the bunker. He had to yeah. take an unplayable and kind of cost him the tournament. Um, Justin Thomas, another yeah. one. He's won two PGAs. Been struggling a little bit. Missed the cut at the Masters. Split with uh, Bones yep. recently. So yeah, new caddy on the bag. You hope that's not something that's going to spiral into a sort of yeah. downfall for him. Yeah, for sure. And then I think, kind of for my my sleeper long shot type of guy that I really think is going to win a major soon is Cameron Young, who yeah. hasn't even won a PGA Tour event yet. But just another one of those guys, kind of like Xander Shoffley, like. Just a top 10 machine in big mm-hmm. events. Like, he just keeps giving himself a chance, keeps putting himself in contention. I think, you know, one of these times, like... I mean, he was one shot off, Young was, at the Open yeah, a couple years ago. When Cam Smith won. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I think he had... Like, he had he had his chance to win that tournament, for sure. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, Young, I think he was T9 at the Masters this week and didn't particularly play very well on the weekend. Um but yeah, I, I, I think he's on on my short list yeah. of players that's gonna break through soon here. Yeah, in a big way. I'm gonna add one name to your list because I like all those names. Um, the other one too, obviously the the elephant in the room, so to speak, in all these majors until he wins another is Rory McIlroy. Yeah, um, we're now approaching ten full East seasons without him winning a major, and I think it's about that time for him to kind of. Um, the t- the clock is ticking for him to do that. I think. Um, you know, there's just so much more talent that's coming into the game, and it's becoming more and more difficult to win those. And so he's getting all these chances. He's giving him, he's putting himself in contention quite often, um, but he just can't seem to get over the hump. So, um, but then the other one is Sahith Tagala. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a big fan of his game. Oh yeah. I think uh, especially you get a course like Valhalla where you do have to kind of bend it off the tee a little bit or place your tee shots well, and he can bend the ball both ways. Um, if the putter gets hot. For him, it could he could be there at the PGA. So. Yeah, he's got he's got all the shots for yeah. sure, and he's long. Yep, seems like he plays well at big courses like mm-hmm. that. So, um, I think that's a I think that's a good call. Yeah, for sure. I'm I'm excited to see what he can what he can do because he's also another one of those just guys that's easy to root for. So, um, all right, LPGA side going to the ladies side. We have another golfer chasing greatness. A la Scotty Scheffler, um, and it is Nelly Corda. Yeah, she's won in four straight starts this week. It is the Chevron Championship, um, big major for the ladies. Um, you get the, a world class field, right? You have thirty four major winners, eleven past Chevron winners. Um, but as you noted, actually, or you, I guess, added the note in here. Well, it's my notes, right? This last six champions have been first time major winners. Yeah. So um, there is something maybe to this field or this course where um it's a breakthrough type of event so if that's the case of course nelly would not be um winning this week yeah if you i mean if you are stats or an analytics type of type of guy and and you look at that you might think okay well maybe there's something to that that's working against nelly this week but um i mean she's really just kind of retaken over the the game on the lady side you know, we saw it a couple of years ago. She kind of had a similar run where she was just dominant, reached world number one, mm-hmm. and then kind of had an injury, had to miss some time, and and has 
was struggling kind of for a while to come back and regain that form, but this year it's been it's been just dominant. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's Scheffler esque. It's mm-hmm. they're like the same player basically. Yeah. They're just it's it's a certain um it's inevitable, it seems like now. They step on the course and you can kind of tell right from the get go if it's gonna be a Oh, it's another week. You know, they're going to knock off a win. But with Nelly, it seems to be a little bit more drama-filled. Yeah. Her wins are, uh, at least a couple of them have been kind of in doubt, at least the first couple of days. And you're like, oh, when is she going to show up? And, and then she does Saturday or Sunday. She yeah. comes from behind. Or, she likes to give others a chance, yeah. for sure. <laughs> yeah. I mean, even the match play, I know a couple weeks ago, she um, was, I think, in 20th or 25th place after... Or with mm-hmm. one round to go, yeah, barely got into the and match the top play. eight got into the bracket uh, for match play, and she, you know, shot the round of the day to get to get into the top eight, and then you know did her thing from there. Yeah, won three matches. First tournament that she won of the year too. She gave up like a three or four shot lead on Sunday. Was all the way like trailing by two or three, and had to make just an incredible run down the stretch yeah. to force the playoff with Lydia Ko. And uh, ended up winning, and you know she's won three more since then. So, um, yeah, just just really fun to watch right mm-hmm. now. I'm I'm looking forward to to the Chevron. Yeah, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun one, Nelly. So she wins a fifth straight event. She'll be the third uh, woman to ever do that. Nancy Lopez and Annika Sorensen, a couple of decent mm-hmm. decent golfers in their day. That's good company. Um, that's good company. So those are the only two that have won five straight starts. Nelly would be the fifth or excuse me, the third to win five in a row. Um, Also, other history being chased, so to speak, this week. Lydia Ko could qualify for the LPGA Hall of Fame with a win. For sure. She's been on the cusp of that for a little bit. Um, And then also of note, Angela Stanford is making a 98th straight major start, um, which is a wild thing to think about. Impressive. And so she could get to 100 this year, which has never been done. So we've got some... A lot of things to watch this week. Um, with all of that being said, the course went through a, a allegedly went through a renovation. I haven't looked at all the details of it, but Carlton Woods is, you know, there's some new bunkers and some new green complexes there. Um, with all that being said, is there any names that you're going to particularly be watching for or looking for that could maybe um, take the throne from Nelly, yeah, if you will? For sure, um, I like Minji Lee this week. Uh, she kind of is one of those players that. Has got all the tools. I mean, all these all these players are obviously world class. Yeah. Um, but she's kind of just seems like she's got that consistency to her, and seems like she always plays well in big events. Um, that is the sister of PGA Tours, Min Woo yep. Lee. They both kind of just have that that charismatic. Yeah, it's kind of, fun, it's kind of a swagger too. At the yeah, same time, where they for sure. They can they have a certain confidence too. Well, yeah. it's, it's like a fun confidence kind of thing. And deal. and she's won she's won big tournaments before. Yeah. So, um, I think she's definitely one of the one of the front runners to give Nelly a run this week. Um, another name actually that has been playing some really good golf is uh, Celine Boutier. Mm-hmm. I think she's French. Yeah, that sounds right with the last name. It sounds right. I could be <laughs> I could be wrong, but she uh, ended last year on a really nice run. I think she picked up a couple of wins, maybe even a major. I might be remembering that wrong, but um, yeah, just a couple of couple of names yeah. there that I want to keep an eye on this week. Yeah, I think you know Lydia Ko should be will be hungry to to get that that sort of Hall of Fame status at a, at a mm-hmm. major like this. Um, so it it'll be a good event. Um, you got world class field, um, and you have, of course, all kinds of history being chased here. And so that'll be a really fun one. You also have um, Lottie Wout, winner of the Augusta National Women's Amateur, will be in the field as mm-hmm. well. So um, in total, you have really the best of the best in the world there. And then um, it should be it should be a good one. Rosang as well is another one yeah. we should throw in there too. Who For sure. burst onto the scene right away, turning pro and winning been relatively quiet since then yeah i think so. she contended in one of the majors last year yeah but outside of that debut win it's kind of been yeah kind of been quiet from her i think it'd be nice to see her take take that next step mm-hmm. really you know i mean obviously it's only her 
second year as a professional and yeah. the first year wasn't even a full year. Um, but it's just, it's just funny. The, the expectations that I know <clears throat> that are set on these golfers at yeah. such a, such an early stage now because of tiger. Um, right. You have like all this I talent. Thought, you have all this talent right away as an amateur, and you make all these accomplishments. Yeah. It's like, okay, well, now you, now you got to go win right. on the pros. Yeah. So, um, but no, she's she's really fun to watch too, and and can can do everything. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, hopefully hopefully she can she can play well. Maybe uh, maybe give Nelly a scare on Sunday. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I will be tuning in Sunday afternoon for this one. Um, just. You know, especially if if Nelly's in contention, it's yeah. gonna be really fun to see. Like, you know, if you're someone, if you're appreciating Scotty Scheffler's run here, it's kind of the same. Can be, I imagine, the feeling is the same for Nelly, and and as she tries for a fifth straight win, um, it's you have really have kind of two titans in each side of the game that are just taking over and becoming the faces of golf, and that they're really good faces of golf mm -hmm. in the sense that they seem to be like pretty good people and easy to root for, yeah. and um are genuinely trying to kind of grow the game or, you know, be role models for, um, for the younger generations yeah. to come. So, uh, that seems like a good place to end it. Right. For sure. Uh, we'll wrap it up there. <laughs> um, golfers, if you aren't yet, make sure you read the Sunday swing every week on secondswing.com. Pierce writes it up, recaps the weekend in professional golf. We'll have one this week, um, on the RBC heritage. And of course the Chevron, um, yep. signature event this week on the right. PGA Tour. That's Major right. Major championship for the ladies. It's another another good week for golf. Absolutely. Uh, so tune into the golf, tune into the Sunday swing, and then also stay tuned for our content with Mark Brooks coming as well that we captured last week. A lot, a lot of talk on the PGA. His win at the 96 PGA at Valhalla, some stuff about the golf course, and a whole lot more. Um, with that said, thank you, Pierce, for the time today. Golfers, subscribe, and stay tuned for more of that content.